Okay, so macro photography, we run into some issues, um, and it's like a catch-22. We, we want to get as close to something as possible, but once we get so close to it, our depth of field is relatively shallow, and I mean, really, it can be minute at times. So we want to go to higher f-stop. Unfortunately, macro photography, if something is moving, we want to hand-hold it. So when we go to higher f-stop, we're going to have a slower shutter speed. Then we're going to be boosting up the ISO, and we only want to go so far with that. So you have to sort of find a trade-off there as to um, you know the proper uh, f-stop shutter speed combination and the highest shutter speed that you can use while you're hand-holding. Now, if you have it on a tripod and you're subject to still, uh, then you can go relatively high. But just remember that even if you use the maximum depth of field, if you're really close to something, that may extend it only out to about an eighth of an inch. So it's not much to play with. So you really have to look for your focus and make sure that uh, the part that you focus on is the part that you want in focus. And in most cases, that's going to be the eyes of something, whether it's an insect or something small or one third of the way in. So what we'll do is um, we'll show you some pictures of different f-stops and shutter speed combinations so that you can see uh, how the background compares to the foreground. The other uh, thing too is that the lower the f-stop number, the more the background is going to blur out. So it's going to add to the picture sometimes and allow your subject to pop out. Uh, other times you want to show the background. Uh, so take a look at some of the examples and you can see. All right, let's talk a little bit about working distance. Uh, I have two different lenses here. I have a 100 millimeter macro and a 180 millimeter macro. And uh, the difference between the two is that this telephoto is gonna allow me to be further away from my subject here. And we have a dragonfly right there. I'll see if I can get close to it. But the 100 millimeter is gonna, I'm gonna have to get much closer to dragonfly than I would the 180. So if I'm photographing flowers or something like that, it doesn't matter if I use a 50 millimeter, 100, or uh, 180 macro, but if I'm shooting insects, I'm probably better off using the longer lens so I don't have to get so close. So working distance here, let's just show you real quick. So with the 100 millimeter, this is how close I have to get to this dragonfly to get a one-to-one -one shot. And I'm coming on in here, and right here is where he's in focus. And you can see that that's pretty close to him. And he doesn't like me being that close. So if I change this out to a 180 lens, I should be able to get almost twice the distance. Now, I am going to have a little different look in the picture, and you'll see that uh, when we show it to you. You'll see it up on the screen. But now when I move in, this is how close I have to be to get him in focus. A well, one-to-one -one shot of the dragonfly. And again, one-to-one -one is if he's one inch, if I'm taking a picture of one inch of the dragonfly, I got one inch on the sensor. Yeah, mother. So that's a perfect example of why you want to use a longer macro lens because every time I have to get that close, I spook him all the time. So he finally decided to move on down. And I'm assuming it's a he because he's staying on one branch. He's, he's marking his territory. Now he's comes back to the same branch here. So let's try this one more time, a little bit slower, see if he'll put up with me. Let's talk a little bit about focusing techniques. When you're shooting macro, sometimes it's hard to focus by turning the barrel of the lens. A uh, better way is to figure out the, the magnification that you want set the lens and then close in on your subject and just get close to your subject until and rock back and forth until it's in focus and that's all I'm doing right here is just rocking back and forth until he's in focus here and when I see him in focus I click the shutter okay make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and our next macro video is going to be on lighting so we're going to talk about techniques of lighting your macro subject to get the maximum depth of field that you can stay tuned